Hey guys, it's Nemanja and welcome to another really fun episode about the brushes. Brush is really powerful tool in Photoshop because you can use it for a ton of cool and creative things. You can even do some cool special effects using brushes. So by creating a custom brush, you can create some snow, rain, mist, clouds, debris, and so on and so forth. A lot of cool things. And today I will show you basic principle how you can create any custom brush in Photoshop. So without further ado, let's jump straight into Photoshop and let the fun begin. All right, guys, we are here in Photoshop and first thing that we need to do to be able to create any custom brush is to create a blank document. And one important thing that you need to know is that if you're using Photoshop CS6 and below, the maximum brush size is 2500 pixels. So the maximum document size is 25 by 2500 pixels. Or if you're using Photoshop CC and above, the maximum brush size is 5 thousand pixels. So now I will create a new blank document, go to file, new, and I will go with a 25 by 2500, 72 resolution. It's perfectly okay for this. You can go with 300 resolution if you want. 8-bit, white document, that's it. So now we have a simple white square. And now all you need to do to be able to create any custom brush is just to create a black silhouette over the white background or black silhouette over no background at all. You need to remember this because you don't want to have background in any other color except white or no background at all. Otherwise, you will have a big mess. I will show you that later. But just for now, remember no background and black silhouette of black shape of any brush you want to create. So let's create a simple triangle brush. I will go to a lasso tool just to create a triangle like this. And I will fill it with a black color by holding Alt and Backspace or Option and Backspace on Mac. And this is it. It's a little bit messy, but it doesn't matter. For this example, we have this triangle and we want to turn this into a brush. So remember, guys, that I said that uh, we want to have a maximum document size to be able to create a maximum brush size for the current version of Photoshop that we are using or where we want to use this brush. So now because we made a smaller triangle like this, and if we convert this into a brush, to be able to convert into a brush, it's a really simple task. You go to Edit, Define Brush Preset, and just name it. Triangle, right? This is not how you spell it. Triangle, all right? And press OK, and we have it. This is it. We have our triangle brush. Everything is cool. Everything is perfect. Everything works fine, except if you right click, you will see that now our brush size is 536 pixels. And this is cool. And if you want to have a smaller brush, everything will work perfectly, no problem at all. But if you want to have a bigger brush, like like this, in for some reason, and create that, if you zoom it, you will see we are lacking the resolution because we created a smaller brush and then enlarge it. And of course, we don't have enough resolution. So that means that if you're planning to use the brush size to the maximum brush size that your Photoshop is allowing, Photoshop version is allowing, make sure to create the big brush to utilize the whole real estate of the document size. So now if you want a triangle, make a big triangle, fill it with black. And now we go to edit and define brush preset, name it triangle. And now we have this really cool brush and we can always make it smaller. No problem at all. It will work perfectly, but now we can make it really big without losing the resolution. You see, we have nice, cool, crisp edges. So that's it. It's simple like that. All you need to do is to create a black silhouette over the white background, go to edit, define brush preset, and there you have it. You have your custom brush in a matter of a couple of seconds. Remember when I told you to use the whole real estate of the document, that doesn't mean that you always, always need to create like a big silhouette, big shapes that you want to turn into a brush like I did with a triangle. For example, if you're creating some particle brush, you just need to populate the whole real estate to use the whole real estate of the document, but with maybe some smaller shapes. Let me show you that really quickly. Let's delete this. We don't need it. Let's create a new document, a new layer. And now what I like to do, I like to go and use again, lasso tool or whatever to create some shapes, but I want to create one shape here then press and hold shift and create one shape here, maybe one shape here in the middle, maybe one shape right there. And I used the whole real estate of this, this uh, document. I could do the same, more dense, smaller, 
right here in the center, but that's not good. So I always want to use the whole real estate of the screen. Now I want to uh, go and turn it into a black and go to edit, define brush preset and name it maybe particles. Okay, and now I can always make it smaller. So I could do this, just make it here, but I couldn't use then a bigger brush if I need it. So that's it, how you are creating a custom brush. It's easy like that. Now the next step is to change some brush settings to be able to have some cool effects while using this brush. So let me show you that really quickly. Now that we created this custom brush that I named particle brush, if we just use it like this, it's interesting, it's cool for something, we can change always the brush color, whatever, and maybe make some cool art, but we can make it even more interesting because this cannot be used for particles so much, but it can be used for a lot of cool things. But in case I want particles, let's delete this. And uh, let's go right here to brush properties. You can go right here or press F5 on a keyboard to enter this. And here we have a ton of options. I will not go through all of them. Today I will just give you some ideas. And the best way to learn is just to go through all of them, play and experiment and see what every single uh, adjustment here, every single option will do to your brush. And you will learn a lot by experimenting. So here we have a brush tip shape and we have a spacing. This is the, the most common thing that we are changing here. So now if I move this, we have some spacing between, between those two strokes as you can see, but maybe we can, we want to enlarge those spacing as you can see here. So now we'll have a bigger spacing or make it smaller like this, no spacing at all, etc. So I want to make bigger spacing like this. And this is already looking like some cool small particles. But as you can see, the pattern repeats, we always have the brush in the same direction, same angle, etc. So we can make it even more interesting by going to shape dynamics. And we can go to angle, we can go and change the angle with every single stroke. So change the angle jitter all the way 100%. And now you can see the brush is changing the angle all the time. It's rotating, tilting a little bit. And this is really cool. Now we have something a little bit more randomized and even more interesting. Also, we can change the size because now every single stroke is the same size, but a different angle. But if you go all the way to 100%, we will have one smaller, bigger, and so on and so forth. So it's completely random and that's cool for some cool particles. Also, we can change the roundness. So experiment with this. Sometimes it's better, sometimes it's not doing good to your brush. So you don't need to go to all the way to 100%, but maybe around 30. And this is cool. It's changing the roundness of the brush strokes, making them more squeezy and more wider. And that's, that's really cool. And that's it for the shape dynamics. Of course, you can change a lot of things here. You can control it with the fade, pen pressure, etc. Also the angle, you can go and uh, say directional, which is really cool for some brushes, like maybe arrows or whatever. Experiment, see what is into your brushes. Then we can go to scattering and scatter it a little bit. So make it more like this. So maybe scatter it and you can see it's again, really cool thing. And we can make some cool particles here, make really small brush and then change, see what settings works best for current situation. So maybe you want to create some flying particles from the fire, I don't know, and just make this around the fire image that you have and make your photo even more interesting and uh, fun to, to watch. Then we have texture. You can add some kind of a texture to your brush strokes. Then we have a dual brush. We can have two brushes in one and a lot of cool other things like color dynamics. So color dynamics is cool because you can change uh, between uh, background and foreground colors. So maybe we want green and, and uh, red and just switch between them 50% or 100% or whatever. And if I zoom it, you will see it will always switch between green and red color and something in between and you can have something like that or maybe to change the hue all the way to 100% you don't want to switch between red and uh, green you just want to change the hue of the color and now you'll have a lot of cool shapes uh, sorry not shapes but the colors color variation in one brush so this is this is cool thing etc saturation brightness jitter it will make your uh, color brighter and darker and a lot of cool things that you can change right here in the brush settings and create basically any kind of 
custom brush that you want for a lot of cool effects in Photoshop. And that's really, really useful, especially if you're doing photo manipulations like I'm doing. You can do a lot of cool things right here. Right now, let me show you just one thing that you need to know by creating a custom brush brushes and then we are done. And that's, let's just delete this, this layer. And that's when you want to create semi-transparent brush. You can create transparent brush like for clouds or for whatever reason you want, you need by changing the silhouette color from black towards the gray and white. White is 100 transparent color, 100% transparent brush. Black is 100% opaque brush and everything in between is the variation between 100% and 0% opacity. So for example, we want something like this. We want 100% opaque and then we want maybe something 50% transparent or opaque, doesn't matter, and make it something like this. So this means, let's, let's do it like this. I don't know why, but let's do it. And uh, let's fix this. So this means that this part of the brush will be 50% transparent. You can see through it. And now if we make, turn this into a brush, let's go to edit, define brush preset, and just, I'll just press okay because I don't need a name for this. And let's just delete, create new document, a new layer. I always say new document, I don't know why. But now we have this. And as you can see, this is 50% transparent it's really cool if you change the color to maybe something orangey you will see it's transparent just 50 percent and sometimes this is really cool it's really useful and maybe we can go right here and go and change shape dynamics change the angle and just just play with some settings right here like this and you can see we have something like this this is just a simple example that you can do a transparent brushes in case you need something like this for any reason. And let me show you here. Here we can go to shape dynamics angle and go to directional. And this means that it will follow the direction of your brush. So this is really cool if you go and set the control of angle to directional. And also if you go to brush shape and change the starting position like this, then it will follow this. You will have something like this. It's really cool. Or maybe 45 degrees. You will have something like this. And a lot of cool things that you can do with custom brushes and create some cool custom shapes. You can now create this brush and create this cool shape and then turn this into a brush. But make sure to make it black and white because now you can transform this into a brush, but you will not know how transparent this would be because you don't have impression if this is 100% black or 50% black, etc, etc. So that's basically it. Right now, let me quickly show you what happens if the background is not white. So if you want to create, let's delete everything. If you want to create maybe yellow background and then you want to create some kind of brush, let's go with a triangle again and just make a triangle. Okay fill it with black and turn this into a brush, go edit, define brush preset. You will have square brush because you will have something like this, as you can see. So background will be, let's delete this and let's hide this. Background will be semi-transparent because it turns yellow into a gray color. So just desaturated and it makes it, of course, semi-transparent because it's not 100% black and everything else is staying the same. But you don't want this. In case you want it, you can do it. But this is rarely, rarely a uh, thing that you can you want to do in Photoshop to have like square background and brush inside. But just to let you know that this is what, what you're getting if you're... Let's, let's, let's see what we can do with this. This is what you're getting if you if you have some other color background. So maybe you, you want something crazy, but I wouldn't do this. I don't know why you would do something like this, but but you can. This is an option. Maybe make smaller brush and just play some crazy, make some crazy shapes. Okay, but that's the point. This is what happens when you have some other color background than white. 
Read guys, so that's it for today. I really hope that you like this episode and that you learn how you can really easily create any custom brush in Photoshop. One more time, remember, make sure to check about the document size with the Photoshop version that you're using. Go create black silhouette over the white or no background at all. Or if you want semi-transparent brush, use any shades of gray for that silhouette and make sure to utilize the whole real estate of your document. Go to edit, define brush preset, and then you have it, there you have it, your custom brush. And then you just need to go to brush settings and change those sliders, check or uncheck some options and make your custom brush even more awesome and create some cool things in Photoshop. And remember that every single brush has different settings in brush properties. And also for each project, you can always change those settings and nail the brush settings for the current project you're using on to have it even more suitable for that thing that you're doing. Right guys, so that's it. If you like this episode, if you like this content, just press the like button down below, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe if in case you're not already and also ring that bell to get notified about all the future episodes. And also if you have any questions regarding to this episode, leave me down there in the comment section below. I will be glad to answer it. Have fun experiment and see you guys in my next fun tutorial. Bye bye.